Hello and welcome all of you beautiful people to round three with Amulet Titan. Um, you can see the list on screen here. Uh, as I said before in match two, I've already done more of a in-depth deck tech for this particular list in uh, match one. We played match one against Bluetron and match two against Red Green Obosh. So let's jump in for round three and see what we get paired against. Yeah, if you're interested in those other two matches, uh, as you can probably see the result on screen here, then you can go ahead and take a look at the other two videos. They'll be in the playlist along with this one. Hopefully we can get that 3-0. Also, um, while we're here and waiting for an opponent, I want to mention if there's anything, any kind of suggestion you have that I could use to improve my gameplay or my videos, I'm more than welcome to fielding those suggestions. So just leave anything you'd like to say in the comments below, and I will get back to it. And if you like what you see, then leave a like, subscribe. You'll be able to see more content as I post it. All right. All right, we're on the play, so that's good. We'll play first. Uh, we're against Lurus. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. This is kind of a slow hand because we're not going to have any untapped green sources. So, like, if this were a forest, I could lead on stirrings, pick up the forest, or like, or potentially even find an amulet to play this bounce lane untapped on turn two. But we don't really have that. However, Dryad tends to be very good against the Luris deck in general, whether it's the, like the Red Prowess versions or the Jun versions. Uh, we already have a Titan lined up. We've got two bounce lands, so that's good for. All that's good for the Jun Luris matchup in case they have discard. Um, we'll have to just top deck another Titan, but we still have that uh, virtual card advantage in the the turfs and stuff. And against the mono red versions on the play, I think it's fast enough to try to get a Dryad and play on turn three. So I'm gonna keep it tentatively. I think it's fine. If we top deck an Amulet, it's quite good. So uh, yeah, we'll just lead on our. Only non bounce land. Seems like a, a good course of action. Okay, so we see Stomping Ground. That's interesting. This makes me think this is probably Jund. Because the, the burn versions don't usually splash green, so. It's a little bit of bad news, actually, because I personally find the. the burn Luris matchups to be a little more reasonable. Uh, I think it's just going to be Simic Growth here. And then next turn, I mean, it gives them a little more information about our hand, which they'll probably di play discard spell on us anyways, but um, I think it's still correct to lead the Radiant Fountain here. Plays a little better with our other Bounce Land. And it also gets an ETB trigger out of the way so that we can get immediate value off of this dryad. I assume they're probably going to take the pact here, but I'm not sure. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to take the redundant dryad unless they have removal for the first one, so... Because we're about to untap and play dryad anyways. We know they have this seal of fire, so... Playing a second seal of fire or like a lightning bolt or something would be enough to deal with a dryad. Okay, so they do go ahead and take the pact. That makes sense. Forest is interesting. Uh, that's a good one, I think, because... Well, we don't have to give them that information. I'm going to go ahead and play the Fountain. We can actually play a Dryad and play the Sun Home and play the Stirrings off the Sun Home. And that tells them 
it doesn't tell them the information of what card we drew. I think that's probably a little bit better. It doesn't play as well with a potential Garenbrig if they're able to kill our Dryad, but since we'd have to draw Garenbrig and Titan, I think it's fine to do this. Worcesterings. We'll okay, well, I guess we'll take the Growth Chamber. And that's that. Again, though, this the powering out of the lands and making them deal with a Dryad is one of the reasons why I like Dryad in the Jun Luris matchup. So having two Dryads here is pretty good. Again, if this were just the red-white prowess version, then this would just be a 2-4 blocker. Uh, and potentially, we would be able to slam a Titan and dry it away all of their all of their, uh, or Valakut away all of their creatures if they were on burn, so that's one of the best things that Dryad does in the matchup. Ooh, it's a shadow. Okay. Four-color shadow. Okay, I don't know how exactly... We do have, actually, an Engineered Explosives in the main board for a situation like this. Uh, can't play and crack it. If we Talari West for it and leave it in our hand, that makes it weak to an Inquisition or a Thought Tease, but if we play it, then we get blown out by K command. Hmm. Weird spot. We can alternatively play a second dryad and play. Eh, playing second dryad doesn't let us transmute T West. Although it's not that particularly clear that the T West needs to be an engineered explosives at this point. It might be better to go instead for a Titan, anyways. We can also just try to set up for a T-Westing next turn and letting us wait to decide if we have enough mana, that is. So if we play this, if we play Dryad, we get to play three lands, one, bounce something, the same thing, three. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So it wouldn't really be a Titan next turn anyways, but it would let us transmute for explosives without being uh, exposed to discard spell. I think that's probably the best line. Not really loving it, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and play a bounce land first. Try to get as many land drops out of the existing dryads. I don't know if they would have anything that could interact with the dryad we're about to play, but technically it's correct to play it this way. And then here we could play the gruel turf or we could play a forest. I think Probably. <sighs> oh, well, if we play Force, we could actually transmute the Tolari West now. But again, we'd run into a potential discard spell. So if we play the Gruel Turf and bounce the Sun Home, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because this would be a Gruel Turf, eight, nine mana next turn. So we actually could transmute for a Titan if we had to. And if that doesn't work out, then we can transmute for an EE instead. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Gruel Turf here. I think it's most likely we're just going to get a a Titan, though. Not attacking. I'm not sure if we're blocking. We'll see if they lose any life, because that will impact our decision, obviously. We might want to try to play around a Team or Battle Rage here, if we have the ability to play around it. Because we play two Vesuvas instead of the one... We pretty much just went on the spot if we untap with even a single Dryad. So if we lose a Dryad here to a Chump block or something, then it's really no big deal. Luris, maybe? Yep. Bobble's good. They It would have been a little aggressive... Uh, never mind. I was going to say it would have been a little... No, they could have. Yeah, it would have been a little aggressive, but they could have played Luris and played Seal of Fire to shoot themselves with Seal of Fire. I don't know how good that would have been. And because... Oh, we just draw the summon effect. Well, I think they're just dead here, so... I don't really know if there's anything to play around. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to play around, because they... if they stub this, then we just play two lands and transmute for another Titan. Uh, they don't have mana up. I guess they could have Dismember, but... That's fine, because we have two Dryads, so we'll just play this and get Valakut and Vesuva. And that should do it. And this will copy a Gruel Turf, why not? 
Okay, that was pretty simple. Usually these types of games don't play out as simple as that. Um, I'm not sure if the main board engineer supposed was actually really doing anything in that game, but perhaps if it had played out a little differently, it would have been better. Bayloth uh, kind of helps stabilize, and it's good against Croxa and K-Command. I think that this matchup is about just buying enough time. But I think the Bayloth is fine. Beast Within could potentially hit something like a Damping Sphere, um, and it would be able to turn a Death Shadow into just a 3-3, which is much more manageable. I'm not sure that Beast Within and Alluris is that great, but it might be better than Dismember. I usually bring in Dismember in this matchup, but it can be very variable. So Tracker's great, obviously. Chameleon Cloth is obviously. I think I'm going to try this time the Beast Within instead of the Dismember. Although it is kind of weak to Stubborn Denial, which I don't... I think they would have to be playing Stubborn Denial in games 2 and 3 anyways. We'll see. So I'm going to trim a couple of Summoner's Packs because I am anticipating, well, no, maybe not that many, maybe just three for several reasons. One, I want to be able to have enough to potentially top deck a Titan and having seven copies plus the two TUS is better than having six copies plus the TUS. And secondly, the Summoner's Packs will help find our Baylos if they're going to make us discard anyways. It will help find the, uh, the Chameleon Colossus that we bring in as well. So I actually think Pact is fine here. It's unlikely, since they're playing Luris, that they have anything like um, Fulminator Mage to punish us, although they could have something like Molten Rain uh, or Pillage. I would expect to see those. Um, I'm going to cut a couple Ancient Stirrings and maybe one Gruel Turf just because I want to play around the Gruel Turf because I want to play around the potential land destruction effects. Uh, Zeus is fine in this matchup. Explore is great. Grazers uh, are actually better than Amulet, I would say. Maybe I want four Grazers and only two Amulets, to be honest, because the Grazers at least chump block. And I need to cut one more. It could be a Summoner's Pack. We already cut one land, so I don't really want to go below 29. I'm going to cut another Stirrings. Well, although this matchup's kind of fast. The Stirrings helps us find lands, although we don't, we may not want to be putting a bunch of Bounce Lands into play anyways, so I'm going to try it this way, I think. Natural Bajuka Bog. I'm not sure how great Bajuka Bog is against them. If they're playing Traverse the Ulvenwald, then the Natural Bog is great. Um, I'm not super worried about the Vesuva, considering they'll probably fetch an Overgrown Tomb, and that could be a green source for us. We have some interaction. We have some protection against like a Croxa or something along those lines, and we have a little bit to dig for more lands. I think, and, and we have a little bit of uh, ramp as well. With the Trump Walker, so I think this hand's fine. If they don't play a green land, this Vesuva might punish us, but I think that's fine. If they just play fetch land in the pass, then I might still just Vesuva their fetch land so we can fetch for breeding pool. It's kind of weird, and I don't like to I don't like to put a Vesuva in the graveyard in this matchup because Vesuva copying field can be very good. But well, there's the overgrown tomb. Take Bayloth. You know you want to. It's probably taking either Graze. Grazer would be a weird take here, but it might be correct. Or Beast Within. Yeah, they take Grazer. Okay. That makes sense. I, th I do think it's the correct line. Uh, unless maybe they have something to protect from the Beast Within, but they can always just take this at a later date with a different discard spell, so... Um, since we're not going to be doing anything for a while, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this Overgrown Tomb so we can get the Stirrings Ball rolling. Now that this hand doesn't have any ramp, it's quite a bit awkward. And all of our lands need to be tapped, because the Field of the Dead we drew wasn't an untapped source, so that's not ideal as well. So perhaps this Ancient Stirrings is looking for an untapped source. Well, this Natty Bog is looking pretty good against uh, Tarmogoyf. Now, Dryad is some more ramp as well. It's going to be like a turn late here, but I'm going to go ahead and bog them to get rid of this bobble as well. I don't want them to recur it with the Luris. And we'll cast the Stirrings. 
Well, if we Syrings and pick up an amulet, they could just make us discard it. And unless we topped, if we topped like a basic land, casting Dryad would not let us cast the Syrings, but I think that's probably fine. But the Syrings might find us the untapped land. So if we, I think if we find an untapped land, we'll take that over an amulet. No untapped land, no amulet. But another T West. I don't hate that. Or a bounce land to pick up our Bajuka Bog again. Mm. Nah, I'm going to take the T-West. Because I want to play around some kind of land destruction or like a Damping Sphere or something. Right now we're very well set up against it. And we have plenty of lands to put into play with this Dryad. So we'll get there eventually. This Tarmogoyf as a 2-3 is not that threatening at the moment. Although they can sack their Peat Land to, to put a land in the yard as well. Take Bayloth. Yeah, I'm not going to make that joke again. Probably just Dryad here. Yep. Well, it's a good thing that we weren't planning on playing Dryad next turn anyways. I would like to draw a Grazer. That's what I'd like to draw. Well, we would have had the untapped land. We can also Beast within this Death Shadow immediately. Or we can just plan to play Bayloth. Uh, I think the play is going to be upkeep beats within the shadow. Because that guy represents a lot more damage than it looks on the surface, so. We're doing it on the upkeep so that they can't attack us with the beast. Although I guess they could just play a Luris, like land Luris and then play the shadow again. That's not great for us. Maybe the Beast Within was a little hasty. Perhaps just taking the damage and doing it on the end step would have been better. That way they wouldn't be able to attack with the Shadow until next turn anyways. Although, that would have been the same thing as just as taking the damage, so... Oh, they unearth the Shadow. That's a bit better for us than casting Luris there. I wonder why they didn't. Well, what could they be holding up? I think I have to play the Bayloth here, though. I don't love to do it, but I, I'm, I am going to. They might have, like, a trophy or something along those lines, and that's what they're holding up, but... This way we can stabilize brick wall this beast for a little bit. Or maybe they just don't have anything. Maybe that's why. No, but I still should have played the Luris there to get the shadow back instead of the unearth, I think. I mean, we'll eat this beast for free, I guess. Not blocking shadow because they'll just fetch land. Crack their fetch land several times and... Do a ton of damage to us and eat our Bayloth. Might as well get at least one creature out of it before we chump, chump block with it. See, now they have Luris with no value, so definitely would have been better to play Luris a turn or two before. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to make a difference. We have to block this, and we're taking lethal, so yep. Next game. Perhaps that hand was, shouldn't have been a keep. Just because the discard spell on the the Grazer is too devastating. I didn't consider that all the lands were in tapped either, so... I don't know. Maybe maybe it was just a close keep. The Beast Within was not looking particularly great there. If I had been a dismember, we wouldn't have had to deal with the Beast instead. And I think that card disadvantage is important. So I think I'm going to switch back to dismember. Starring's looking not great there. I mean... I don't know what else to say. It just finds an amulet or a land, but we kind of need to be on the board. I'm not sure. And we need Dismember to kill the Luris if we don't if we don't draw a, a natty bog, that is. So I think it's fine to just cut the stirring. Still not entirely sold on packed, because if we packed it for something and play it and then have to tap out the turn after and the thing that we play just dies, it's like not great. But if the thing that we play is a chameleon colossus, then it might be fine. Yeah, I think that's it.
we didn't see anything along the lines of damping sphere either, so I'm not really worried about that. I don't think that's what this game is about anyways. They just want to be as aggressive as possible, honestly. It's what every shadow deck wants to do against Amulet Titan, so... Being on the play is really good, then, if that's their plan. Huh. So this hand is fantastic if this Talario West were a forest. Because when we just play this amulet out, and we don't have to worry about this card at all. However, if they turn one Inquisition or Thoughtseize and just take our amulet, we have the same problem that we experienced last game, where all of our lands enter tap and are just slow, and this time we don't have that many lands to play out with the Azusa. I don't really love that we just get destroyed by a discard spell here, although we can dismember an early Shadow or Tarmogoy for something. Maybe that makes up for it, and if we top deck another amulet or just more lands, then that makes the Azusa better. I don't love it, but I'm going to keep it. And we'll see how this goes. So we'll play this T-West. Play. Because the hole that the discard spell and amulet would put us in could be easily undone by playing an Azusa and getting several land drops out of it. Because that's all we want this amulet to do anyways. So if we top deck a untapped source of some kind, we can play the Sanctuary and the next turn play the untapped source. It plays into Damping Sphere, but not much we can do about that. Well, there's an untapped source, so we're executing the plan. Not playing the uh, Breeding Pool there instead because we wouldn't be able to cast the, the Azusa the following turn. Although. Holding up this member doesn't look too bad here. I'd like to draw another land here, particularly one that won't have like some kind of ETB trigger, something like Talari West. Oh, well, maybe not anymore. There goes Azusa. Hmm. Well, now I'm definitely playing T West next turn. I mean, there's a bunch of discard spells, but our hand had a lot of good threats, and we can still just top back more like Titans or something, or Dryad. I will absolutely take that. So, our hand was well set up against discard spells in general, even though it kind of plays a little awkwardly around them, just because we had such a varied suite of threats. So, next turn we can play a Bayloth, or we can play a Dismember, or just hold up Dismember. If we draw a Bounce Land, we can Transmute T-U-S. I don't really know what Transmuting T-West would accomplish. We could Summoner's Pack, but then we'd only have 5 mana in play, because we'd have to draw a Bounce Land, obviously. So if we draw a Bounce Land and play it, we'd have 5 mana in play. Okay, I'd love to get a land here. Um, I don't know what kind of basics they're playing. Snow Covers are cooler anyways, so I'm just going to get a Snow Covered. <laughs> Field is pretty decent, actually. Not fantastic, but that could do something later on down the line. Just play the Baylaw. No reason not to get a clock in play. They're kind of stuck on lands here, so that's good for us, for sure. And I am more than willing to pay for a life to cast this dismember here. We're quite a bit ahead. We now have four, five, six mana, so if we top deck a Titan, they probably just lose. Titan probably gets... Uh, sure. I don't care about that. Uh, if we top deck and play a Titan, we'll just... Oh, man. That makes our Dismember look stupid. Yeah, if we top deck a Titan, we'll just exile the yard with a bog and do something else. Okay, well, this is Titan. I have no choice but to just immediately go ahead and transmute. That's fine, though. They've played so many discard spells. If they have another one, they'll get us. We'll see what they do. Um, if they go to a low enough life total, it might make sense to dismember this Death Shadow to play around Team or Battle Rage. That's a goif. Now our Field of the Dead is not going to be making tokens, though, unless we draw a differently named land right now. Yeah, not going to do anything with this. With this uh, Summoner's Pack, let's see, we have 7 mana, so yeah, we can get a Bog and potentially dismember their goif. 
Let's see. So I have amulet creature, a haunt. So artifact creature, enchantment, land. That's four. All right, let me double check. Artifact. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so we can get a bog, bog them with a trigger on the sack, dismember this goif, and then it'll kill and exile the goif. No, it won't exile it, but it'll kill the Goyf once the Bog Trigger resolve. So I like that. They're holding up a potential Stubborn Denial, but if they have it, they're going to cast it on the Summoner's Pack, and we skillfully drew a second Summoner's Pack, so. Yep, you got it. Here we go again. Uh, now we have Instant, though, actually, so we'll get a Titan. Yeah, we have Creature... Uh, eh. Artifact, creature, enchantment, land, instant. Okay. Uh, how many types do they have? They have land, sorcery, instant. Oh, so we can bog ourselves and, and still make the dismember play? Yeah, I'm into it. So let's make some mana here. We'll play a titan. Always yield. Yep. Now... This Death Shadow could definitely be a problem. We might want to get Radiant Fountain as the other land here, or, or I think maybe a second TOS makes sense as well. So TOS plus Simic Growth bouncing a Slesian Sanctuary lets us transmute for another thing next turn. Uh, do we have another Summoner's Pact in deck? Yes, we do. Okay, so I think it's going to be TOS plus Bog. Actually, that's what I'm going to go for. And we wanted to dismember. So we'll exile our yard. And we'll dismember now. Okay. So if they have team or battle rage and we don't block, then we just die on the spot. But I'm willing to make them have it. I think our best route to victory is to keep this Titan in play, so... If they got it, they got it. They did not have it, so... I think we're looking pretty golden here. Stronghold, does that do anything? We have three, six land types. This would be a seventh, and we could get double Vesuva for our Field of Dead, and I don't think we could lose. Um, I'll... We are also potentially able to... Yeah, we can transmute for a Dryad and play it, since this represents the sixth mana. So... But we need to get a Bounce Land and something else. That's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with it. So... We will yield to these. We're going to get a Valakut plus a Bounce Land. Uh, no, if we get Valakut plus Bounce Land and Transmute for Dryad, then we don't have another land, actually, to play to trigger the Dryad, so we don't have Lethal here. So, I'm not going to go for that line, actually. Definitely want another Field of the Dead here, for sure. So, playing the the, the, the Stronghold pre-combat is definitely correct, regardless. question is, what is the other card that we need here? We could get the second Vesuva... To copy Bajuka Bog and exile their yard. That doesn't seem relevant to me. We could also get Boros Garrison, so if they kill our. Uh, the, yeah, we could get Boros Garrison so that if they kill our Titan, then. Nah, I'm just gonna get. No, Boros Garrison's fine, actually. I'm gonna get Boros Garrison and pick up the Slesian Sanctuary so we can transmute next turn if we need to, but we'll still have the Garrison and play to haste. And this Vesuva can copy this field of dead. And now we're looking like we're in very great position. Yep. I'll gladly just throw every single one of these zombies. Maybe leave one back in case they have... I mean, they can't have a Liliana because... Oh, well, they didn't reveal Lyris this time. So they could have Liliana. I doubt that's what... Maybe they forgot to reveal? Or did they play Lyris already? I don't know. Snapcaster Mage, huh? Snap Push. Okay.
Huh. Bobble is an unfortunate draw for them. They would rather have just drawn the card that was below it. Yeah, well, we win the match. I'll take it. Again, I don't really think that the the shadow matchup is particularly great for us. We the only reason we really won that last game is because the turn that we plan on casting that summoner's pact, we immediately spiked the second summoner's pact off the top, which let us play around the southern denial. I don't think there's anything we could have done if we hadn't top decked the second pack. Which actually, you know, maybe I can take credit for that because I thought about siding out more than one summoner's pack. Most people side out at least two packs in matchups like this, but I just don't like that because you don't have enough top decks for your Titan. This matchup always comes down to top decking, so maybe that summoner's pack could have been, say, uh, extra like dismember or something, or whatever, a beast within, or something, some kind of sideboard card that I would have brought in instead, and then we would have lost that game. So maybe maybe I actually won that because of my sideboarding choices. Um, anyways, interesting match for sure. 3-0. I will see you guys for round four. Actually, I just was about to end the video, but um, I decided I should come back and say, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed the content and you want to see more or you just want to see the rest of this league, however it is, please give me a like, give me a subscribe, anything, some kind of feedback helps. I would like to hear from you guys. So, yeah, uh, this is Red Face Menace officially signing off this time.